Hello, it's Beanie here. Today, I'd like to share a very simple, quick way of conditioning your brain to see prices. Uh, it has to do with added waves. Uh, if you have heard of added wave, it's a very popular methodology to analyze into prices to the point of predicting prices. Right? But the problem of, of added wave is often you find that it is easy to look at it after things have happened, but when it's just progressing, it's difficult to judge, you know, whether you're right now at wave uh, one or two, or you're at the end of the fifth wave, or you're in the corrective wave, right? But um, let me just put on um, the... Uh, paper here to let you know all right uh, what kind of very simplified uh, added waves uh, that we are talking about today and that would help you to easily visual uh, visualize prices all right and because it helps me a lot all right so let's take a look into you know the the first type of added wave which is a, which is a corrective wave all right so what's corrective wave right now for example when you have price going up Okay, and then um, you are looking to buy and the point that you want to buy is uh, at the low point here. You want to buy at the low point. Now, price would have to correct. When it moves down, it will move down in this three wave uh, pattern, which is a ABC pattern here, right? And then we call this A here and the B here and then the C wave as a corrective wave. You will wait for this corrective wave to form first before you engage in a buy here. All right. The characteristic of a corrective wave is that it must come down once and it goes up and it goes down. Okay. Always remember if you have an upward movement, all right, the corrective wave will have to be lower, will have to move lower because this will allow you to buy at the lower price once after it had corrected. Now, what happens if you are looking at a you know bearish movement? So, how would the corrective wave look like? So, same thing. Price will move down. You are interested to sell when it moved higher. It could be, for example, price moved down from let's say ten dollars and then to one dollars, and you didn't have the time to uh, sell. And then you like to sell when it's at higher price. Therefore, price will have to go up and then come down. And then go up in this corrective manner, like a zigzag form, right? Uh, and when it's near to the high, then you'll be looking to sell here. All right. Now, I need you to remember that a corrective wave for a downward movement will have to correct higher in order for you to sell higher. And it will exist in this form of ABC. Now, rather than remember that as ABC, always remember it like a bit of a like a zigzag manner. All right, and when it comes down, always like a zigzag manner. Now, with this, I'm going to look at currently what's happening to the market, meaning that we're going to take a look at what we've just learned and apply that to the current market right now. What I have here is a chart on Hang Seng Index (HSI). Right, this is a daily chart. If you are looking at the price right now, we are, you know, looking at the price life. Okay, so we would be putting what you've just learned into Hang Seng Index. And we're going to say, hey, uh, what kind of corrective wave are we right now? And then things like, is it the right time to buy? Um, has it uh, completed that corrective wave? Okay, so let's do a little bit of a revision here. Now, just now I mentioned that when you have the downward movement, Right. That means if your impulse wave, that means the dominant movement is a down, then your corrective wave would be up, right? Like this. Okay. So that's how a corrective wave will look like. Let's talk about right now. Okay. We, we, we're going to just uh, look at right now what is the current dominant wave. Right, so this is the current movement here. Now the dominant wave, that means the dominant movement right now is actually this up. Okay, now in this case here, uh, you know, remember I've talked about how to draw the corrective wave if the dominant impulsed wave is up. So if the impulse wave is up, then we'll be looking at a buy to buy lower. So we want to buy somewhere around this point here. Now if this is the case, then we want we need to see that corrective wave actually coming down. Now, in this case, let's take a look at right now what Hang Seng is doing. The wave A 
that means you know the movement that we're going to see here seems to be this wave now and then if you visualize that corrective wave it needs to go up which it did and uh, you know if you are looking at a possible area for you to consider buy it means that it has to be lower because we need the wave c to come down to point lower right therefore this will be your wave a so this is b and then this is c and the whole thing would be your corrective wave therefore in this case here, we'll be looking at somewhere lower to buy. Then what is the one good tip that you can, you know, predict where would be the end of that corrective wave? Now, very simple is to look at this impulse movement, the most recent impulse movement, and you want to take your Fibonacci 2 to draw from the low to the high to sort of know what's the percentage that you can retrace. Now, in other words, you might be expecting your corrective waves to be like this to move to the 50% or to move to the 62% in terms of correction. Now, in this case, why is it useful for this corrective wave? Because you know that right now price hasn't completed its correction. Second, you'll be waiting for a lower price to complete that correction. If you can map this corrective waves in in your in your brain every time to wait for the correction to happen, it helps a lot in getting in at the right place, or rather, it helps a lot in avoiding you from getting in at the wrong place. All right, so this is one a uh, very simple tip, right? That I always always apply for my student because I always expect that the corrective wave would be there. And what happens if there's no corrective wave? I mean, that means you see something that doesn't have a corrective wave. Then for me, I just don't trade because then it's not to my terms. Let me just demonstrate one more example on the trade that I did, right? Based on uh, the FX, and and you uh, you realize that the corrective wave applies in any currencies, any instruments, whether it's stocks or whether it's commodities or even in forex or even in, in indexes. Right, right now we are you know, looking at this. Uh, FX Forex, which is Aussie versus the dollar. Uh, if you look at the price movement, it had a huge down. Okay, so therefore there was a huge drop here. The question is that can you capture that huge drop before uh, it even moves down here? Uh, the answer is yes, because previously we had this downward movement. Right, this was a downward movement. Now, if this is a downward movement, you would expect that the corrective wave to be pointing upwards but sometimes you know sometimes when you have let's say impulse wave there are occasions where the corrective wave uh, will not be pointing upwards there are occasions that it's going to be flat now when you have a flat corrective wave it just means one thing it just means that price doesn't have a lot of energy to to move higher right so isn't it a better news even for the instruments that you are trading right in this case here we have aussie that moves up as wave A, all right, followed by a wave B, and then lastly by a wave C, all right. So that's a very typical, very nice corrective wave. And we have our trades coming in here, all right, as, as this point, and then also another one more trade coming inside here. And that allows us to short right at the top of a corrective wave to capture into this downward movement. All right. Now, as a summary, let's talk about, you know, what are you going to expect in terms of price? When your current impulse wave is a down, all right, don't rush in to short to sell. Wait for price to go up in the form of this corrective wave manner. Now, remember I said before, sometimes the correction can be flat. That means instead of it going up, it can be flat. Or sometimes it might just happen in a bit of a triangular manner. Most important is to wait for that ABC wave to correct in the form of a zigzag manner. Now, do not trade here. That means you don't want to trade here. You want it to go down first and then to move up again to trade on that retest of the price movement. Right When we have, let's say, the buy, uh, then you always need to put in your... Turn, uh, your, your thinking cap and say hey look if it's a buy then price moves up and I want to buy at the low price here then what will happen price will have to come down in this corrective manner where it would be a 
A here, a B, or C. But simply, right, you just have to wait for price to form the zigzag manner. Now, it helps you to very much uh, let you buy at the low or let you sell at the high. I can remember, I said before, that the corrective wave sometimes can be shallow, so it need not be in this very steep manner. All right, I've come to the end of this little sharing. I hope that you find that useful. If you like to be notified uh, of future you know, videos that I'm doing, please remember to subscribe. And if you like this video, remember to give me a thumbs up. <music>